I'm about to show you a video explaining a lot of intricacies when it comes to authentication uh, of bags, uh, when it comes to bags purchased from Cosette, when it comes to authentication of said bags, and comparison of said bags with the really, really for sure authentic ones that are found in the boutiques, in particular YSL. Uh, Fleur Sharp is the content creator that shared with us a wonderful video on her channel. I'm going to post her channel down below where she takes a bag from Cosette, YSL bag, Lulu camera bag that she bought at Cosette, and she takes it to an Yves Saint Laurent or a Saint Laurent boutique where the store manager allowed her to film. And the store manager also showed her the same bag, the Lulu uh, camera bag from the Saint Laurent boutique, and they put them side by side and compared the one she got from Cosette with the one that was available at the Saint Laurent boutique. So in the video you're about to see, I analyze all the photos and the pictures uh, that Fleur shared with us. And we learned a lot from that video, but I just want to let you know the context of that video. It was a learning process. The video begins with me thinking that the leather tags inside the bag with codes in them, that those are authenticity codes, which are similar to the codes that you find in Chanel bags now on the metal plaques that are inside the newer bags or in the older bags on stickers and on the authenticity cards that look like credit cards. Throughout the video, however, we learn that those are not authenticity stamps. Those are indeed uh, model numbers together with the date of production. This means that there can be 10 bags of the same style that have the exact same codes inside of them because they're all the same model and they're all, they've all been made on the same date. Now, at the beginning of the video, um, I misunderstand that because I thought those were authenticity codes instead of them being model numbers plus date codes. So just for full transparency, my bad, my mistake. I've learned a lot thanks to you guys because the video was filmed live during my live stream. So the chat you're going to see throughout the video as we are building up the suspense of all of this video, we're doing our research live. People are Googling information, finding photos, emails have been sent live uh, while I'm talking about this topic and people have been sending authenticity certificates. I mean, it is an insane video. It's a wonderful learning curve. For me, definitely, I've learned so much about Yves Saint Laurent bags thanks to this video and thanks to Fleur and thanks, most importantly, to you guys who always watch, who are always super dedicated to getting to the truth because bottom line, that's all that matters. So I do hope that my explanation now puts a little bit more context and framework to this video. And now enjoy this thriller of a suspenseful video that we just shot a couple of days ago. Enjoy. Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. We got really interesting developments in the Cosette. Do we call it scandal at this point or do we call it gate? Cosette gate, maybe. You know, as for those of you who don't know, just a quick recap. Sydney, Australia, there is a luxury shop called Cosette that sells alleges to sell authentic luxury bags and products. And since a couple of weeks now, well, technically months even, some people have been authenticating the bags that they purchased from them by other authenticators and the bags then allegedly return inauthentic. People wanted to get their money back from Cosette and are trying to get hundreds of people at this point. Okay, we're at a point where hundreds of people now, the news spread like wildfire, more and more news outlets are reporting about this. And as the news outlets are reporting about this, more and more people start panicking, thinking that the bags that they bought at Cosette are also non-authentic. They jump to authenticating websites, and a lot of these bags allegedly return with the authentication process as non-authentic. So people started en masse sending these bags back to Cosette or going back to Cosette physically to try to return their bags and get their money back. Now, Cosette still claims that they're not selling non-authentic bags. So that's what their statement was to the local news or whatever. Uh, but uh, also Cosette offers to authenticate the bags that they're selling you through their authenticators, like third parties, uh, 
But then people say, well, I bought a bag from you, but I'm going to authenticate it through my parties. <laughs> so, you know, people are coming back saying like, hey, bags are returning non-authentic. Can we get our money back? Now, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Okay, thumb up this video. Uh, push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today, get access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco, all spelled together there as well for extra perks. Uh, this video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week, so come join the live chat. It's always interesting to see when we start communicating with each other in the live chats because a lot of the news happens as we're filming. Nina S., for example, right now in the chat just wrote, Oh, good. I'm a Cosette victim and they are not getting back to me at all. I called their customer service and it just automatically says that you cannot get through to them. Okay, Nina S., so this is basically the first part of this video. There's two important factors in this update that I'm going to share with you today. One of them being exactly this that Nina S. is saying. So the development of this uh, Cosette situation right now is uh, as of now, early August 2023, if you have purchased something from Cosette and can physically in Australia go to Sydney to their store with your purchase bag, uh, you can enter the store with your bag. Apparently, they what I've heard is allegedly no questions asked. They just take the bag back, give you your money with a receipt. I guess you need your proof of purchase, of course. But everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. So you go there. If you can materially enter the store, then they will issue you a refund. Apparently, allegedly no questions asked. You just need proof of purchase. However, this is the issue, just like we've heard right now in the chats, and this is also why it's so important to have the live chats always, because we're always up to date um, on what's happening in the world. In fact, more and more of these issues are happening, like with Nina S., where people that have purchased overseas or that have purchased from Australia but are not from Sydney, but are, let's say, in Melbourne, for example, and now want to contact... Cosette to say like, hey, uh, I purchased a bag from you. I've sent it through authentication process, third party on my end, and it came back non-authentic allegedly. So I want my money back. So Cosette apparently now is not answering emails or telephone calls. It's like, I get it. They might be overwhelmed because the news are reporting that it's like hundreds of people are now swarming onto Cosette wanting money back. So I can imagine how they're overwhelmed and probably cannot get at this time right away to answering every request for a refund and a return. And they're maybe prioritizing the local situation because they can't prevent you from entering the store, right? I'm just speculating here. So maybe they're going to get to the online purchases, refunding later, but that's just wishful thinking and hopeful thinking on my end, because obviously when a situation like this happens, of course the customer is worried, hey, I'm sending them my, like the stuff I bought that now I fear is like non-authentic, but they're not issuing me, I don't know, a thing to print out for a return, like to create a package, or if I'm paying for the return shipping, they're not sending me an email to confirm that they are accepting me returning the item back to them. Like, it's a legal process. You can't just send them in good faith a box with the bag you bought from them across the, you know, the ocean if you, if you bought something in America from them. Uh, and they sent it to you from Australia, and now you think the thing is not authentic and you want to send it back to them without them ever answering your emails. You can't just send the bag back demanding a refund because chances are you're going to end up without a bag and without a refund. So that's the problem here, you see. You need to initiate a return process with a company, and they have to acknowledge the fact that you want to return a product. And they have to say, okay, you know, in written form, yes, you can return the product to us and then we'll investigate further or whatever. But you need to have some sort of acknowledgement of the fact that the company has, like, read your request for a refund and a return. A at least so that you have proof <laughs> that they actually received your request. Or, you know, otherwise, if you're just sending it in good faith, the bag back, like I said, chances are you're going to end up without a bag and without a refund. So that's one of the first updates that I have to share with you. And this is really problematic 
Teresa McGuire says, I bought a Bottega Veneta bag from Cosette earlier this year. After your last few streams talking about it, I had it authenticated. It came back as non-authentic. So I'm wondering how to get my money back. So Teresa, uh, why did you purchase the bag at Cosette? I, I want to know. Nina S. and Teresa, can both of you please tell me why did you purchase bags from Cosette in the first place? This is a really interesting point, and it's important to know why. Uh, Nina says, yes, I'm from Brisbane, Australia. No emails or phone calls. Nina S., you're from Brisbane. Well, well, well. You see, you've hit the nail on the head by being from Brisbane. Why? That's the second part of this video. Now, we have someone from Brisbane who has gone far and beyond anything that we've seen before to talk about Cosette and authenticity. But before we do that, let me just uh, read. Teresa McGuire says... Teresa says, this was before I found out about the scandal that I bought the bag and I bought it because I watched Mel in Melbourne's video. Uh-huh. Mel in Melbourne, we're still waiting for you, dear, to post an official video to explain why you did sponsorship with them, why you made a video talking about them and then took down the video, but are, you're not addressing it. This is getting way out of hand. Mel in Melbourne, where are you? This is getting way out of hand. Do you not care for your subscribers? Do you not care for the people who watch your channel? Do you not care for them at all? That you're just silent? Like I hear crickets. Mel, it's, it's about time. You really need to address this situation. My humble opinion. But Brisbane... There's a lovely lady, a trooper. She is in the trenches, you guys. She's a tiny YouTuber, so go send her love. Her name on YouTube is Fleur Sharp or Fleur Sharp, like Fleur, like in French, spelled flower. Fleur Sharp, I shall post a link to this lovely lady's YouTube channel. She only has two videos up and one video is like five years old. It's not like she posts regularly, but... I ran, I stumbled upon, I ran across, I stumbled upon this video by Fleur Sharp, where she claims, come in Fleur Sharp. There she is. This is Fleur Sharp from Brisbane. And she made a video where she claims that she bought a, a uh, YSL or Saint Laurent Lulu camera bag. And guess what she did, you guys? And this is amazing. Nobody's reporting about this, but she's the first one to do it. So I applaud you, Fleur Sharp. That's uh, her YouTube name. I applaud you for doing this. She literally, you guys, she went to Saint Laurent. Yeah, you heard me. She took her Cosette purchased Yves Saint Laurent Lulu bag. She took it to Yves Saint Laurent and the store manager allegedly told her, you know what, honey, you can photograph this. You can film this. You can photograph this. I'm going to bring out one of our bags. This She did this in the store. So, you guys, this is amazing. We've never had this before. Now we have such a wonderful document. And I'm going to share it with you. Of course, I'm not going to show you Fleur's video. You should go check out her video. She needs the views, you guys. So go check out her. But I'm going to show you the screenshots. And um, for some reason, this... Hold on, you guys. It's the Karen share. So annoying. Okay. Now, the... Let me show you the first screenshot. So we're going to have a comparison between the bag she bought from Cosette and the bag that was available in the Saint Laurent boutique the day she went there. And these photos were taken in the boutique. All right. Now, the first question I have for you guys, one of these two bags is Fleur's bag. The other bag is the Saint Laurent. So one bag is the bag she bought at Cosette. One bag is the bag available in the Saint Laurent boutique. 
Now, what do you guys think in the live chat? But also, if you're watching this video later, before, after I've been live streaming, uh, in the comment section, before I reveal to you which bag is which, comment down below. If you think the... Wait, what is left, what is right? I'm so bad at this. Uh, if Okay, let's just say number one, number two. Is number one the Cosette YSL? Or is number two the Cosette YSL? So, it, this is really fascinating. And since I'm filming this video live, I have my live chats already telling me what they think. Crybaby Uzagi says, right is real, question mark. Left looks fake, says Patricia. The left looks droopy. Wait, what is left, you guys? Is, left is number one? Okay, number one is left. Is this left? Okay, so this is left. Number one is left. The left looks droopy. Sylvia says, number two is fake. Anne says, number two is fake. Number two is fake, says Nancy. Tanisha says, the one on the left is fake. Number one is fake, says Tanisha. Katie says, two. Gloria says, one is Cosette. Teresa says, number one is YSL. Linda says, number two. Patricia says, number one. Just Joe says, Cosette is number one. DD Bean says Cosette is number two. Crybaby says number one is Cosette. Shinida Chino says number one is Cosette. Angie says number one looks fake. Rochelle says number one is Cosette. Number one is Cosette, says Gloria. Skin says uh, number two is real. Anne says number two is real. All right. Well, here's the reveal. Most of you got it right, thank goodness. But a lot of you got it wrong. A lot of you got it wrong. And this isn't even a super fake. This is not even a super fake, you guys. A lot of you got it wrong. What does this mean? This means that the trained eye is not trained enough. And the reveal is this. Uh, Fleur Sharp al alleges, I have to say allegedly, because I wasn't there with her, you guys. I'm just reporting about this. There you go. This is the Cosette bag. And she wrote real. I did not write this. She wrote real back. Let's just allegedly, okay? So this is YSL. This is Cosette. Let that sink in for a second. And let's just observe together here for one moment the differences between the two bags. Because honestly, I too, just from looking at it at first glance, I kind of prefer this one because it's aligned a little bit better than this one. <laughs> Because I like that the chevron, the little point here, this one is a little bit tighter at the bottom. This one is a little bit more open, like this here is wider, this opening. Oh my God, it's so hard from everything is mirror. This is wider and there it's a little bit tighter. But then again, I like how, how glossier and slightly darker this one is. But then the YSL here is not really the S, this kind of the, the V portion of the Y doesn't align with the tip of the chevron here it's a little bit more aligned but it's insane right like how similar-ish almost the same they look it's insane but so Fleur keeps on filming let me show you the next photo so we can compare a little bit more now, here she made a very particular point. Uh, she said that she was talking to the store manager and they were comparing in particular this and this, the stitch of the chevron. Oh my gosh, this is too much. Wait, I need to point. This is easier for me. So this line here and this line here. So you can see how there's a um, smaller space here and there's like a wider... Oh, this is so hard. Everything is mirrored. <laughs> okay, I give up. I can't. I, I really, it's driving me nuts, this uh, control monitor. So this is longer than this. Now, I would like to remind you, remember that instance two years ago, maybe, when I raised the alarm about the Chanel uh, small, Timeless Classic small, and how they have uh, changed the way that they do the bottom stitches, the edges. 
And there was a cross stitch on some of them where there shouldn't be one. And I was raising the alarm saying, like, are some of them authentic or some not? Well, apparently they're both authentic, allegedly, but it seems like they've sourced out production of, for some of their bags to other factories that produced cheaper, allegedly. So it brings us back to this conversation now. Are they both authentic? It's just the Cosette one is this outlet grade, because as we all know, YSL has outlets. And all of these brands produce inferior grade quality for their outlets. So is this just an outlet Lulu bag? And this is the boutique Lulu bag. Is this what's going on here? Or is this a, a, a fake? But there's a difference between those two. And here's a little bit more shine. And you can see kind of the wrinkly texture of the lambskin leather here. Here it's a little bit, it almost feels a little bit thicker, which also makes me kind of prefer this bag. It seems a little bit more robust than this one because this leather, I'm not really liking that much. Um, but let me show you the next picture. Again, we have the difference between the Cosette bag and Fleur State's real bag, the one that she photographed in the YSL boutique. But again, you see that wrinkling of the leather. You can see it happening all over, all away. It's just a much softer leather. It's like a thinner leather. So you can see wherever they have a stitch, it does wrinkle up. You know what I mean? It does wrinkle up in a way. It, it almost looks thinner than this leather. Maybe it's also less treated. Maybe there's less chemicals used on this one. Although I don't think so because they're both painted. It's, it's, it's a paint on top of the leather either way. But not a big fan of all of this wrinkling, to be honest with you. I kind of... Because here it also wrinkles up in this area a little bit. But less than here. Because this, this is a brand new bag. I'm not liking this at all. But uh, Blue Bannister says the Cosette bag looks more plasticky. It does, but it also looks puffier, kind of. Tiger Lily says, well, that this is an outlet bag potentially kind of makes sense if it were an outlet bag. Then also uh, Fleur mentions the stitches, how kind of, you see how the stitches are running through in a uneven way, kind of like downwards and straight. Here, apparently, the stitches are a little bit more even and tighter together. I don't know if I see that personally. But yeah, since the leather is softer on this one, it kind of looks more dramatic. Like every hole, every perforation looks more dramatic here and looks a little bit cleaner here. Uh, not going to lie, the real thing looks delicious, says Rochelle. There you go. Well, let me show you the next picture. So here... Um, Fleur, she really went in, you guys. She showed us all the details. She's amazing. Here, she shows us the Cosette bag compared to the Louis Vuitton, uh, the, Louis Vuitton the Yves Saint Laurent, Lou, uh, Lulu. Here we see more the difference between the stitching, don't we? But to be honest with you, she could have, in this case, maybe she flipped it the wrong side. Because you know how the stitches on one side are always slightly different than on the other side. But if they're both on the right side... Big differences, says Tanisha. Left one looks like vegan leather, says Bin Black. Oh, really? The stitching on the real one is tighter. Yes, but I do believe that this is the opposite. I think she flipped it on the other side, you guys. Um, I'm not so sure. You know how when the stitch is always different on one side than on the other? So I'm not sure if, the, if both of them are on the right side. But if they are both on the right side, then it's a dramatic difference between the two. But I do believe that this is the back side. Yeah, blue banisters. It looks flipped, right? I believe this one is flipped. I think if we flip it on the other side, it would be more similar to this. But regardless of that, uh, the fact that we have so much more wrinkling going on here, because this is such a softer grain of leather, and here it's a little bit more stiff, we have less wrinkling going on, also shows us that the leather was treated differently. And not to mention, not to mention that this has a slightly darker tint than this one does. A shade darker, right, Gloria? Let me show you the next picture. Now, this is the side of the strap, right? So the side of the strap, 
I have my uh, pochette accessoires from Louis Vuitton here, which I got directly from Louis. By the way, you should check out the unboxing of that video on my channel. So um, it's the, the side of the strap. She's showing us basically the glazing. Okay, so we have the leather. The photo before was like this part of a, a strap, not this bag. We were talking about the YSL bag. And now she's showing us the side, which Louis Vuitton does this red glazing. YSL does a beige glazing. And so we're comparing Cosette to the in boutique YSL. Again, the difference in shade. From this photo, I don't gather too much information, except that maybe it's a little bit tighter finished. The darker one seems like the edges are a little bit more on point. And the Cosette version is more rounded off at the side, almost like it kind of bled over a little bit, but just a tiny bit. And maybe it's just on this photo. Valerie says, you can only be sure if you have the bag in hand. Fakes have something that will give it away. The leather might be good quality, but the hardware will be lighter, less quality. Not always if you have a King version, super fake. Um, so uh, David says, Jacob called it. What is the real bag anyway? You see where I'm getting at here? You're right, David. You should go check out my video about that specific topic uh, entitled, uh, should we feel guilty or should you feel guilty about buying a fake bag at this point? It's a very interesting video that I made analyzing the, the luxury market little thicker uh, on one. So, well, here we have a finger kind of covering it, but you have to, for the thickness, you have to compare this to this or down here. So this one down here looks a little bit thicker than this one. Yeah, the leather looks a little bit thicker on the darker one than on that one. But let me show you the next photo. So now this is in the boutique, the YSL Lulu bag. Uh, so Fleur tells us here that she noticed by looking at the tag in the original, in the Lulu in the boutique, by the way, I always look at these details. She caught by accident the detail, the close-up here. Look at those wrinkles on the leather because it's a very soft leather. So she said it's a very clean piece of leather for the tag and um, stitched cleanly, clean stamping, clean etching into the leather of the Made in Italy tag and a stamp. And then the leather is very clean. And then she shows us the difference to the one from Cosette. She says, well, here, for, yeah, first of all, uh, the stamp Saint Laurent, as you can see, is not really aligned with the stitch. It's slightly droopy. It's kind of slightly going down. It's a little bit at an angle. Um, it also, anyway, now the embossing is always only done here anyway. So it's embossed here, the made in Italy, that's fine. But what Fleur mentioned that the store manager mentioned to her, and I find that very fascinating, you guys, this was something new to me. So here comes brand new Intel for us so that it can help us when we're looking for like if a bag is fake or not, you guys get your pencils out and start taking notes because this is something brand new that I've never heard before. But apparently the store manager told her this. Are you ready for this? This was like mind-blowing for me. The thing to look for is this. You see this little shadow right there? Do you see it? That little line? running through it's like a fold running through that fold is basically something that allegedly happens when you're not professionally stamping it so the machine that's holding the leather together it snaps the leather and then pushes that whatever it needs to do either the stamping or uh, the the cavity here and it leaves a mark and on an authentic one, you're not going to see that. They do it professionally. And I thought to myself, I've never noticed that before. This little tiny thing is a giveaway, apparently. Isn't that interesting to know? So I'm like, I'm writing this shit down, y'all. Now let me show you the next uh, picture. 
it happens again. This is the Cosette bag. Look, look at this line. You see it running through here all the way through there? It's a slight little fold, but you hear very prominently visible. Do you see this little wrinkle here? You see it? That's again something they've pressed it in there, hold it with their machine to do whatever they needed to do. And that indent is left there. There's the line. Isn't that interesting? I'm always going to look for this from now on. Yeah, best believe I'm always going to look for this from now on. Now, the next photo, before I show it to you, I just want to say, Fleur took a photo of the authentic bag. I will not show you the serial number because you know me. I, I don't want to show this. This is allegedly the fake bag. So allegedly, so we have the serial number. Who cares? Good to know, because if you see this same serial number on, on another bag, I personally would not buy a bag if it had this serial number, just saying. Now, the other bag from the boutique, I I'm not. I covered up the serial number so you don't see it, just to protect the authentic one, obviously. Of course, I'm going to protect the authentic one. But do you see this little dent here? Isn't that fascinating? All right, let me show you the next picture. Nina S. says, I'm happy to show you the line I have on my exact same bag. That's from Cosette. <gasps> Nina S., you have the line on yours as well. Now that we know that there's a second bag that Nina S. has in her possession from Cosette. It, interesting. Let me show you the next. Nina S. says, I'm happy to show you the line I have. Nina S., does your bag from Cosette have the same serial number as this one? Because, girl. Oh. <gasps> Hold on, you guys. Nina S. just commented in the chats, OMFG, that's the same serial number on mine. Nina S., uh, can you send, uh, send me a photo uh, on Instagram, please, right now? Because otherwise I have to say allegedly. But if, you, if your bag that you bought from Cosette has the same serial number as this bag... And if you're not Fleur, if you're not that, this lady who has this YouTube channel, right? If you are indeed a different person, then that's all the proof we need to kind of prove that it's a fake. Because a serial number has to be unique. They cannot do the same number on two bags, you guys. They cannot do the same number on two bags. Instagram or superdacob at gmail.com. Wherever is better for you. Let me check. Oh my God, you guys, this is why it's so important to live stream for me, because I get immediate access to you guys. And while we're filming the topic, we get immediately to talk about it. And thank God for my community. We have, we're such an awesome community here. We share information immediately. And now look at this. We might be, we might be getting to the bottom of this situation right now. Um, Super Dacob Backup is my Instagram account. Busted them live, says Nat. This is shocking. I need you to send me a photo. It's going to take you a while to take a picture of it and send it to me probably, but so that I can share it with you guys right here on the live. But notice this dent again. Now let's look at the picture. The next picture, which I don't know if it's the authentic one. No. So I'm not showing you the stamp. Okay, but let me go back a couple of pictures to the Made in Italy Next, another one. You see how it's flat here? There is no, there's no wrinkle down here. It's completely flat and clean. This is the one from the store. This is the one from the Yves Saint Laurent boutique. There is no snap. And now we let's go back to see the one from Cosette. There it is, a very visible snap. And then the next one with the serial number. Again. The snap. And now let's go to the next picture. Okay. So here we have another close-up of the Cosette bag compared to the Saint Laurent Boutique. Lulu. So here you can see the zipper hardware, the gold hardware. The shine of it is different. It's a little bit darker here, a little bit more deeper gold. This one is a little bit cheaper. Also, what is very, very indicative. Oh, 
Oh, Nina S., uh, can you accept? And then I can send a photo. Wait, where are you, Nina? Dacob C. Oh, you're on Dacob CC. Where are you sending it? On which Instagram? I don't see you. What can I accept? Super Dacob backup. You have to, I think all you have to do to send me some, I think you have to follow me first and then you can send me. Oh, wait, requests? Hold on. Are you in the hidden requests? No. No, there is no request. There's nothing in my request folder. So send it to me on email then. Superdacob at gmail.com. So uh, very interesting here, the dark gold yellow is still lighter than this one, but look at the difference between the gold and the silver tone. This might be gold, but it's a very pale gold, the zipper, but the teeth of the zipper, they're not the same color hardware as the zipper pull. Now you see, that's a very big red flag, very big red flag. They have to be quite aligned. Now, technically speaking, even here, they're not the same shade. So for me, that's also a red flag. But then again, it's not like YSL. I mean, mm. but still, we have darker shades here. The fact that they're not really aligned in color, for me, it's kind of sketchy. But here, it's even more evident. This almost looks like silver, and this is gold. Here, at least, at least we have gold on gold. Two different shades of gold but gold on gold. Here we have something that looks like silver and gold mixed together. Tanisha, I agree with you. These bags are not made well for the money. I completely agree with you, but because both of them, I mean, the wobbliness of this one and how it's kind of like all, it doesn't really stand the way it, this one either, but this one could have been squished while they took it to, to place it to stand. They might've kind of left the, the squished indentation there uh, for whatever reason. Uh, and then also uh, the stitching here on the pull, this is a little bit more straighter here. As you can see, it's a little bit more kind of wobbly. It's not like a straight line. So that's also something to look for. Uh, then I think Fleur mentioned in her video to notice this stitch line running all the way up the bag on both sides of the zipper. Oh my God, it's so hard to do this. On, like running all the way up here as you can see it's much it's a much wider stitch like every stitch is a little bit bigger and it seems a little bit looser here it's a little bit tighter woven you know what i mean this is very fascinating because it shows us these little details you guys i'm here because i want to protect you i want you I'm one of you. We are all consumers. We need to know this stuff to be safe. When we're purchasing these things, we look out for each other. We learn from this and then we know, and then we don't end up spending a lot of money for something that might, might not be authentic. But do you guys see the difference between the stitch here and here? Now, let me show you the next picture. Look at that close up. We got the Cosette bag on this side and we got the YSL bag on this side. Again, I like to notice the little wrinkles that are happening like on secret places like here. It's a much softer leather. This one seems a little bit more coated. But then again, we also have that texture of the leather visible here. Here, there's a little bit of cracking going on. I feel like this is either like a little tiny... What is this, you guys? A dust particle or a little... It's like a hair crack in the leather. Something seems a little bit off there. But interesting to see the close-up of this kind of really loose stitch that goes over here. And here it's much more tightly woven. Look at that tight, tight stitch going on here. A little bit more on fleek, little metal stud. It's kind of pressed into that leather. You can see how the leather has a little indentation going on here. It's much more superficial. It's not really pushed in there fully into detail. And what I find very fascinating, how they've cut very cleanly the leather here, cut here, then the corner begins, and then it twirls upwards and it's nicely glazed. There's a thick glazing going on there, while here it appears to be just kind of, you see what I mean? It doesn't really, there's not that razor sharp cut there and then the curve. And then the glazing here is a little bit sloppier, lighter in color. It's a much lighter 
tone of gray, and here we have a much darker tone of gray. Actually, the glazing here, I want to say, blends in beautifully with the color of the leather. Like, they did, they did something good here. Uh, here, you can kind of see the contrast. All right. Now, let me show you the next one. This is fascinating. This is actually the most fascinating of all of them. You need to ask for all of these things, especially if you're buying a pre-loved bag. Ask the seller. I know Cosette was not selling pre-loved, but in general, if you're buying, always ask for these papers, all of the giblets that come with the, all the paperwork that comes with the bag. And if you're buying new from the shop, keep them. Don't ever throw them away. I always keep mine as well. Always, no matter what I buy. Um, I'm just looking. I put. I, I have mine all together. Like all my Louis Vuitton papers, the description of the bag, I keep all of that. Anyway, the store manager was telling Fleur something really interesting. He said to her, so this is the, the paper that she had, the little tag that comes with the bag that she had from Cosette. And this is the one in the boutique, the Saint Laurent boutique. He said, very interesting to note the difference in the font and also the difference in how separated every letter is from each other. You see how much more tighter printed? So the M and G, look how close the N sits to the M. There's a very thin line between them. Check out how much space we get here between the N and the M. There's a lot of spacing here. The 2020 print, look at the spacing between every number, every digit. Here, they're all much more tighter together. Um, also, very interesting to note this. Now, if this were an outlet grade bag, now, if YSL produced an outlet grade bag and they've sourced it out to another factory, maybe that produces them quicker, a little bit cheaper, you know what I mean? To cut costs, wouldn't they at least still have the same font for printing a paper? Think about it. If this is an outlet grade bag, why would the paper not be the same as this one? Why, like, I get that you want to save money on the leather, but like to not have the same font and the same separation between, I don't, there's a professional word for that. I, you know, I don't know what, what's it called, that space in between every letter, but that these two are different. I mean, I get it. Like maybe the other factory has slightly different fonts, but wouldn't this be something that internally like YSL would send to whatever factory is making these bags and be like, well, this is the standard. It's a computer thing. Like you literally send your standards to the factory, you send them the layout, you send them the font, and then the factory uses that. Wouldn't they do that? Ah, oh, thank you, Carrie. Carrie Fernandez, thank you so much. Carrie says, spacing between letters is called kerning. Kerning. Thank you so much, Carrie. Kerning. So the kerning is much bigger here than here. So Patricia B says, I think outlets sell a different design. No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. The outlets are, uh, some of the bags are exactly the same model as you get in the boutiques. Some are not. Also with the clothing, some clothing is not the same clothing you find in the boutique. But the outlets also sell some of the same models, especially when it comes to the classics. You might get another colorway, like a seasonal colorway, not the classic colorways. But to have this to me seems like somebody was trying to really make it look as close as possible to this, but did not have the same font and kerning available. So they did that as best as they could. Just my speculation here, allegedly. But now let me show you the next picture. Okay, so this is all the pictures that we have from Fleur. Uh, thank you so much, Fleur, for making this video awesome. Girl, like, you don't know what a huge thing you've done. You've did. You've done. You've did. Cha. You don't know what a huge thing you have done for the luxury community on social media by doing what you did, Fleur. So you're, a, you're really, really our hero. And... Um, now, I would like to show it 
if possible, na uh, Nina's photo. Nina S update. Okay, no, it's different. We got Nina S update. Cosette bag ends with a zero four two zero. Nina's bag ends with a zero nine two zero. Okay, so it's not the same code. But can is there a photo that I can show? Hold on. So, um. Diva a budget says, I agree the paperwork should be the same for boutique and outlet. This is freaking scary, just saying. Fashion Bunker Investigates says Zara. Tiger Lily says, would say outlet, but Nina has the same serial number? Wow, just wow. Wait, Tiger Lily, we have now an update. Nina sent in the photos, and it seems like we have one digit is different, which is good. That's good news, actually, because at least the digits are changing. So we have here... I'm going to put them side by side so you get to see Nina S is Nina S's bag right next to the Cosette bag. All right, let's let's show this photo. Okay, I'm going to show you both now. The photo underneath is going to be Nina's photo and the photo above is Fleur's photo. Here you go. So okay, good. So Nina double checked, took a photo. So here you see the digits are the same. ARS 612, what is this, a 5440420. We also have ARS 612544. And then this seems to be a 90920 or 0620. And here's 0420. So there's one digit that's different. That's actually a good sign. So. Phew. Thankfully, okay, but also now we don't have the proof anymore. The kind of irrequivocable proof that it's it's a fake bag. Now we cannot say that anymore because Nina just sent in the photo and this is definitely a different digit. This looks like a nine and this is a four. It's a nine and a four. But... We do have that fold right there. I see that fold going on there. Uh, Nina S says, I have other ladies have the exact same number as mine. <gasps> Nina S, really? So friends of yours <clears throat> who have the exact same code ending in, nine, in 0920, send them to me, please. Can you, can you get your ladies to, to send me uh, a photo of their bag as well? No, no, there's a line on the patch. It's right there. It's right there. Interesting. So these are YSL bags, Carla. Yeah, they're both YSL bags. <laughs> Rose says, the wrinkle is there, but it needs a bit of Botox <laughs> to wrinkle itself out. <clears throat> Oh, Nat says, 0420, isn't this for the month and year of manufacturing, but the first part of the number is the actual code? Does anybody know which part is which? That's a really good question. Now, I know with Louis Vuitton bags, when they used to stamp the codes, I know it for them, but I don't know for YSL. So you guys believe that the, the, the last four digits are for the month and the year? And this is the authenticity number that should be different? Okay, hold on. Let me check online. So online for authenticating YSL says vintage YSL bags have 12 digits separated by a dot. In new models, however, you can find three letters and then 10 digits also separated by a dot. The first six digits denote the style number. 
Next four digits are the date code. Talking about the date code, the first two digits are the month of production, and the last two digits are the year of production. Some bags from the latest YSL uh, Yves Saint Laurent collection have a prefix and a dot before the style number. Note that there should be only one row of digits. Two rows is a telltale sign that the bag is a fake. I'm just reading online. Uh, talking about the date code, so why sell bags use serial numbers as a measure to preserve the reputation of the brand and, the, and to better protect their bags? Hold on a minute. It, what I'm reading here, it's telling me that the first digits are just a model number, so they're not unique to that one bag? So why even have it then? <laughs> like... So it's not really to authenticate. I mean, it's not unique. It's not a unique number. So we're back to square one. Um, we're back to square one. Mahona says, yeah, possibly. Right, says Coco's mommy. So hold on a minute. So if Yves Saint Laurent is telling us that this is literally just their product number, not serial number, and this is just a month and year of production, then it's not like with Chanel, you know, every bag has its unique code. Nat says, so they can be the same as long as they are produced in the same month. If this description that we just found online now is true, then technically they can be the same. If this, if this number up to the four denotes the product and these four digits denote the production, if this is the style number, and this is the date code, then yeah, technically you can have three, four bags with the same exact number if they're all the same exact bag made in the same exact month and year, then yeah, then this is not a unique code. So it's not like so special like with, you know, Chanel bags that every single leather good at Chanel has its own unique code. So they're not even unique. Come on, YSL, you can zoo better, zoo better. Now, you might be saying, hold on a minute. Louis Vuitton also kind of only had the date code. Yeah, but you know what they implemented now? They have a hidden microchip inside every one of their bags. You don't even see it. It's it's hiding underneath. Uh, it's hiding under. It's between the canvas and the interior lining. But you can kind of find these um, microchip, there's like an app that you can download. You cannot read what's on the microchip because there's nothing on the microchip. The microchip is actually just a key to unlock what Louis Vuitton workers have on their computers in their stores. So the microchip is a code to read what they have in their system but you cannot do that through but anyway but you can find the microchip by passing with your phone or if you have the app to find these codes these microchips you can kind of scan it by going with your smartphone over the bag and then it's going to vibrate when it finds the chip and usually the chips are are placed either behind pockets or like for example um i know for a fact because i've scanned it that this, that my, um, that my packing cube, uh, the Louis Vuitton packing cube, the microchip is behind the leather vaquetta and the, uh, this, uh, woven synthetic material and the canvas. So it's between the canvas and the woven material right behind uh, this leather patch. So when I pass over it with the app and the phone, it goes like, da -da -da -da. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's right there. <laughs> but you can't read what's on it because, like I said, it's a special code. But with YSL, if this is not their authenticity code, then they either also implemented microchips. And if they don't have microchips, then how on earth are you supposed to use this to help you authenticate the bag? How? Louis says luxury fashion has become their own fake. I don't get the draw of YSL bags, says Lady Bradface. Before the price was nice, but at current prices, bleh. <laughs> I think Bulgari too, uh, it links to their site, says Kuro. Sir says, I don't think they have microchips. Oh, so you, I don't know, because like the only YSL bag that I have is the Rambuteau from uh, the early 2000s. 
when uh, Eve was still alive, and that was way before chips were even a conversation. But I got mine directly from a Yves Saint Laurent boutique. Isn't that interesting? What do you mean, Danny? There's a serial number on a different tag in Fleur's video on, on one of her photos? You mean on the on the paper? Yeah, but on the paper it can't be. Oh, no, no, no. There's a different serial. Yes, uh, but that's uh, a different date stamp at the end. Yeah. And this was why I didn't want to show her code, because I thought it was an authenticity code. But now that we know it's not an authenticity code, we can technically show the photo. Well, I mean... This situation is... complicated. <laughs> MM says, another interesting thing with the Cosette issue is some of us have been given the same authentication certificate that has the same order number and unique code. Okay, now that's a problem. If Cosette is sending you authenticity certificates and the authenticity authenticity certificates have their own authenticity number like of the company that's authenticating. And that's a unique number and more than one person gets that same number on their certificate, that's a problem. That's a huge problem. Are you kidding me? No, that that is a that is a problem. <laughs> that is a problem. At this point, I'm using a paper bag that QC number is authentic, inspected by number 15, says Gloria Aretina. Spouse says, Oh, Gloria. Well, this situation is still a mystery. I will keep all of you updated, okay? And I'm gonna go and dig some more. As you see, just throughout this video, thanks to you guys and the internet, we've learned even more. I've learned a ton just making this video. We started off in one point, now we're at another. But I'm gonna keep you updated. I'm gonna keep digging, and I'm gonna try to keep find finding more and more information, photos. It would be great if you guys had these certificates. If you got them, if you got these certificates from Cosette, and like Cosette authenticated through a third party, the bags that they're claiming are authentic and if these certificates come with their own authentication numbers and if you have photos of certificates that you received from Cosette and your other friends or fellow members from the luxury community also received them with the same number of authenticity codes uh certificate numbers well then we need that as proof as well that'll be really interesting so send them over to superdacob at gmail.com I will keep you all updated, but until then, subscribe, thumb up the video, and let me know your thoughts down below. As always, love you loads. Take care. Bye.